Hi there, thanks for checking out our repair channel. Um, if this is the first time you've ever been to our channel or seen one of our videos, thanks for watching it for one. But if you'd like to subscribe to our channel, we'd appreciate that as well. Uh, if you like this kind of stuff, like these videos, and we've got a whole bunch of them on the, our YouTube channel. If you just do, if you go to our videos under our name and just scroll, and you'll be scrolling for a while. We've got 350 plus videos on YouTube. I think there's a... Uh, I think as of today, when this video was recorded, I think there's 365 or so, but I know there's 350 plus on uh, videos on YouTube. I mean, we got a lot of videos on how to fix things, how ones work, uh, you know, some review videos on some stuff. Um, we also have some videos on the cattle scales and load bars that we work on, which we work on a lot. We don't work on quite as many as those, which I wish we worked on more of them just because they're... Uh, kind of fun to work on they're more mechanical and wiring versus electronics and stuff like that so you use it you get to use a different set of tools to work on that stuff uh you get to use wrenches and ratchets and stuff like that sockets and stuff versus uh wire snippers and soldering irons and pliers with this kind of stuff here but uh if you want to check out our website it's there's a link down in the description for both our websites we've got two of them we've got the one for fencer fixer and uh, Fencer Fixer is spelled with F as in Frank on both of them. And we've also got the CattleScaleRepair.com website. And there's links for both of them down in the description area. But we work on a lot of uh, different um, uh, things. Uh, we work on a boatload of fence chargers, but we work on a handful of uh, cattle scales and low bars as well. But these are probably our um, uh, bread and butter of what we do is the fence chargers. Um, well, what I want to do on this video is kind of do like a semi-review and just an explanation of of how an, a fence charger works. Because what's nice about this particular unit, um, this is a uh, Gallagher, which the name's missing because half the sticker's gone up top there. But this is a Gallagher M1500. It's the old style. They don't make this version anymore. They haven't made it since about 2002, uh, maybe 2003 at the latest. But a very very good old school unit these things are built like tanks and would run and run and run and run for years and what got a hold of this one was lightning uh the guy that owns it uh, happened back in the summer and uh he i think had spares or either bought another one whatever it was and he put these on the back burner now he's like well i need my i need some extra fence chargers for springtime so he sent them to us to try to get worked on and get rebuilt and going again and he's already okay to repair them this one he actually had an old style m800 as well which is sitting somewhere around here he had an old style uh m800 as well and we got that one going for him uh wasn't as bad as an m1500 when it came to the repair because it wasn't as much wrong with it. But uh, it was just more as age and lightning that got a hold of it. The age had stressed up the capacitors from being old and wore out kind of thing. And then the board got hit by lightning. So what we, we repaired the board versus replacing it, which saved the customer a bunch of money. And we replaced the capacitors with new ones and tested the output and everything else. That did load tests, stress tests, all that fun stuff. And it's uh, back to working like it should. Um, so let's open this unit up. I put the screw in there. There's usually, there's either no screws in them or they've got the silly uh, screw on the front with these little like notches in it. And you gotta have a special tool to take it apart or you, or you take a, a, a cutter or something like that and a cutting wheel and cut a little slot in it and use a flat screwdriver to take it out. But we'll take this unit apart, show you the inside of it. So this is the inside of a Gallagher M1500. And I love these old old units like this. These things are so well built. There's so a lot of wiring going on with them. If you pull this board out of here, you got wires running everywhere. And I've about got these things memorized which where the wires go, so I can almost do them blindfolded um, on where these wires go. I've done a lot of these things. Um, but I'll leave this board out here for a minute. Well, before we plug it in and show you. But what's nice about this particular model, 
if you want to understand how a fence charger in general works, whether it's plug-in, battery, or solar, and whatever brand it is, it doesn't matter. They all kind of they don't all of them don't look like this, but the, the but the flow and how the electronics work and how the output puts out and how the fence charger pulses and all that fun stuff. This is a good representation of how to explain that. So just exclude whatever brand it is. It doesn't matter. This is this will, this will go for any make or model brand out there that's uh, electric fence related of uh, the of the current style that's been around for about 30 something years now. Um, so power comes into it on this particular unit comes in right here. This is your 110 volt AC uh, version. So you get one side of your AC cords, the neutral side comes there. The hot side of your neutral or hot side of your AC comes on one side of the fuse, goes the other side of the fuse and comes over to this side, which powers up the board. And on this board, this has uh, four big old capacitors on it. And what that's part of is some brands do it differently. Um, this particular model did it on when it came to building up the charge because it builds all this builds up the charge gradually through these capacitors to get them over to these two big old capacitors over here but they call this on in gallagher stuff and probably some other brands a multiplier circuit and you got these diodes here that kind of uh right here these four diodes all each one of these goes in line with these um, capacitors electronically and it's there to be part of their um, uh, to protect them um, protect the capacitors and um, so as it builds up the charge through all these capacitors gradually it puts it over to this big these stack of capacitors over here and then this particular device has there's a timing circuit in here that times it every second and a half give or take but during that timing uh, deal, there's a um, SCR, they call it, or a, or a thyristor, or whatever you want to call it. It's right here. A lot of brands use something like this. Some look bigger, some look smaller. At the heat sink that's on this um, uh, piece there to kind of help with the dissipation of heat. And this is actually the device right here. When it ties into this timing circuit, this is actually what fires the capacitors and everything um in this unit so when it gets all that charge built up and that device there snaps and triggers it takes all this energy that builds up all across these capacitors and there's a couple wires here that run down it's hard to see let me turn the light on there's two wires down here one there and one there that go into the output transformer what sits right there and it takes that energy, and when it discharges, it goes to that transformer. There's about probably six, seven, eight hundred volts DC across these capacitors. By the time it gets through all this stuff over here, it from AC it turns it into DC, and takes a high amperage, low voltage, like eight hundred volts, high amps, puts it into that transformer, and that transformer steps it up to a high voltage, low amperage, so that way it doesn't really severely hurt you. Um, and takes it, you know, say 8,000 volts um, DC out of those uh, transformer. And this particular unit, pop this little output board, this uh, board here, they call it the VDR board, but voltage dependent resistors, what that VDR stands for, it's what these things are here, these orange things. And they're... They're called different things and different brands. They've been called MOVs, which is metal oxide varistor, I think is what it is. Basically a voltage controlled device. It's for a surge suppress surge suppression on the from lightning. And when the transformer spikes up the voltage, it puts it into this board, and this board spits it out to your terminals. This particular one has a ground. A half power or reduced power and a full power terminal right there. Most people don't use the half power. It was there just in case. But uh, most people just put it to the red and green for the full power and just went, you know, went to town with it. Um, the way that this thing gets the half power set up is use this big resistor right here. It goes between the full power and the half power. It can't, just basically takes the power from the full power, puts it over here, but through that resistor, it lowers up 
output out so that way you don't have two full powers that kind of thing when sometimes these resistors go bad right here the half power doesn't even work so then you if someone really wants the half power to work you gotta pull this tran this resistor off and solder the a new one in but uh, I would say 80% of the time when that happens, most people don't care about that, so they don't even worry about the half power being a being an issue. So, but this unit does all these fence charges when they do this pulsing discharge, charge up, all that fun stuff, and timing. It's all done in a fraction of a second, you know, very very fast because this unit clicks like every second and a half, give or take. So in between the clicking is when all that timing and charging up and discharging is going on. So it does it very, very fast. But that's how a um, electric fence charger does it uh, on some brands. Some brands use this multiplier circuit like this one does, but they might have little BD capacitors that build them up through steps. Uh, some of them have a uh, input transformer uh, on the board that takes that, bumps the charge up from, say, 120 volts or 6 volts or 12 volts, whatever voltage is coming in spikes it up to two three four hundred volts whatever it is um gets it into a bigger capacitor which could be one of these or it could be a uh, capacitor that's the size of your thumbnail you know it depends on the size of the joule a unit is and um and then uh, there's a timing mechanism in there as well and so it triggers it there's a big transformer it'll either built on the board or separate or however it's mounted on the board um some brands are mounted like this one like this is a uh, Gallagher S22 board, and as you can see on this one, if you're curious, um, this has a uh, timing is in, done within this chip right here, and this does have some stuff on the back side. This has a uh, surface mounted SCR right there, versus a big one like this one is. But see this transformer right here? That's that little step up transformer. Instead of using all, all these capacitors, use a little bitty transformer to, to bump the voltage up. And here's that big capacitor, which is basically what this is right here, is what this is right here. That's all that, that basically what it is. And then as it discharges, so you can see it's across that uh, solder joint from the capacitor. There's the soldering and the input and output of the transformer, which is right here. And it spits out to your fence and ground terminals, which is uh, right here. So the so even small units like S17, small solar units do it in a different way, but basically the same idea. So, but uh, we'll plug this in, show you that's working. Uh, it says 110, 120 volt model. So so in between those clicks is when this unit is doing all that timing, discharging, charging up, all that fun stuff. So it does all that, you know, fra you know, milliseconds, microseconds, what the hell, whatever the hell it is. But this is a uh, old school Gallagher. This is a good old unit. So if you ever got one of these units, man, no, do not throw them away. Every part in here can be repaired or replaced. Uh, we repaired this board versus replacing it because these boards aren't cheap they're not giving them giving them things away so we repaired that board placed the capacitors uh these boards are still available but you can still repair them to a point and or replace them if they have to be replaced and transformers in this are no longer made but we have custom made transformers for m1500s m800s mpe2s things like that the old school gallagher we have custom made in the usa transformers for uh these units are not made in china or japan or a place like that uh, we're going to do a little spark jump here and go across the ground. Go across the ground and fence. Hard hitting unit. Not the biggest that Gallagher made back then or even today. And not the biggest unit by any means by any brand. But this is a 15 store joule unit. Probably outputs like 10 joules or something like that. So it packs a pretty good punch. It's a uh, upper middle of the road size unit. Here's a voltage test on it. Getting 8,000 volts out of it right there. Half power is also 8,000 volts. But what changes with the half power is how strong how well it can handle the load 
Um, we'll do a spark jump across it and you'll see how much less it is. Get it right. So it's still probably like two, three, four joules coming out, you know, with uh, energy. So it still packs a pretty good punch, probably stronger than some of the smaller units out there nowadays on the half power. So, um, but uh, that's just a, I'll turn it off real quick. That's just a basic kind of overview and run of how a fence charger or electric fencer or fence energizer works. The only thing I want to do on this thing is I saw it when I was looking at the board a little closer is on this uh, SCR. There's like, oh, God dang, it's hot. Whew. It scared the crap out of me. I was, it was hot. I grabbed that heat sink there and it was a little warm. So let me, um, there's, there's some crust on there. So let's blow it off. Now, now, now it's all cleaned up. So we'll reinstall this board. People always like oh, get all worried. Oh, you're gonna break the board. Or you're gonna hurt something. These boards are pretty thick. Gallagher doesn't go skimpy on the boards. You know the thickness of the actual circuit board. Plus, I'm just hitting the edge of it. There's no circuit. There's no tracking right there or anything to get in the way. I've done it a thousand times. Oh, well, there you go. Well, hopefully you like this video. Uh, we do a lot of videos on a lot of different things, uh, different brands, different models, makes, ages, all sorts of stuff. So if you like this kind of stuff, hit the subscribe button and like the video. Check us out on Facebook at Fencer Fixer or Facebook.com slash Fencer Fixer. If you just go to Facebook and do your search, just type in Fencer Fixer as two separate words or one word. I don't know how, don't know how it is on there. But however it is on there, just click on that. You'll find us. We've got, I think, 2,100 likes on there. So we've... We're growing steadily on the Facebook, so I don't really focus too much on it, but, you know, people like doing it, so we put it out there for people to find us and ask questions that way and get a hold of us that way. So um, we're just an independent mom-and-pop shop. Uh, we do free quotes and all these different fence chargers, and we do 18-month warranties and everything that we work on repair-wise. So, like, this unit is probably 60%, 70% new on the inside, and it's got a, a year-and-a-half warranty on it. So uh, lightning damage is part of our warranty. But until we do another video of how one works, we will see you guys later on. Thanks for watching our video.